After last sowing Indiana in the last seconds, yesterday the Fighting Illini parted company with Penn State to advance to the Big Ten championship game. The Michigan State Spartans are determined to tear down the nets again and show their medal as the conference's best. Mateen Cleaves seeks another trip to the Final Four, and the Spartans' journey begins today with a Big Ten title and number one seed on the line. Selection Sunday continues with the Big Ten Championship game presented by NASDAQ. Illinois and Michigan State in the final. The Illini with a last second win over Indiana. Then a pounding of Penn State to make it here. Michigan State with wins against Iowa and Wisconsin. <laughs> Jim Nance along with Mr. College Basketball, Billy Packer from Chicago, and uh, a rematch of last year's final in the Big Ten Championship game, but all kinds of differences from a year ago, Billy. No question about it. We were all shocked that Illinois got here. Not now. I really think this Illinois club belongs uh, as one of the premier teams in the nation, not only in the Big Ten. One reason why the Illini so much improved is a freshman, Brian Cook. He's been starring here in the Big Ten tournament. Well, since they moved him into the starting lineup, they're 12 and 2. The kid has great hands. He has a a lot of ability on the inside and gives them that low post scoring they've needed. Morris Peterson for Michigan State named in one poll the MVP of the league this year. Well, he goes from sixth man and first team all conference to maybe the player of the year and certainly one of the premier forwards in all of college basketball. All right, Billy, as far as the matchup goes, the X's and O's, we talked to the coaches, Tom Izzo and Lon Kruger, and they broke down the title game for us. I think we're going to have to somehow contain their inside people. I think we will defend their perimeter guys, even though Bradford and Williams are very difficult to defend. I think we got a chance to do a decent job there. It's the depth we lack right now because of Managanya being out that I'm concerned with the five or six guys that are going to rotate inside. You got to try to rebound and keep them from getting theirs on their offensive boards. You got to try to get back and keep them from getting transition opportunities. And you got to really compete and, and be physical and tough in trying to execute your stuff on the half court. The right to claim supremacy in the Big Ten is on the line with Illinois and Michigan State next. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. NASDAQ, the stock market for a digital world. And by Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fit you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Michigan State for the Big Ten Championship. Lon Kruger's fourth year. He's had three 20-win seasons at Illinois, and the other season, a year ago, took him all the way to this title game with a sub-500 record. He starts McClain, Cook, and Lucas Johnson, all underclassmen, as well as the backcourt with Corey Bradford and freshman Frank Williams. Tom Izzo, three straight 20-win seasons at Michigan State, and uh, believe it or not, that's the first time in school history that's happened. Peterson, Hudson, Granger. We're talking about a very experienced team that went all the way to the Final Four last year. Cleves and Bell, the starting backcourt, made it all the way to the Duke game last year at Tropicana Field in the national semifinals. Michigan State has trailed for only 30 seconds in this tournament. Games against Iowa and Wisconsin. Biggest deficit, one point. Jim, if I look at these two teams and you say, well, what is the major difference? The thing that jumps out first to me is the fact that Illinois has a rebound advantage over their opponents of zero. They're exactly even. Michigan State, the best rebounding team in the United States, 13 more rebounds than their opponents. And when they played head-to-head -head in which Michigan State won this year, they out-rebounded Illinois. Can you believe this? 41 to 16. So if there's going to be a change for Illinois, it is that they've got to get up on the glass. That game at East Lansing between these two, 91-66 final. And it was over by halftime with Michigan State leading by 19. So a quick start in that one. And really it's been 
Same story at the Big Ten tournament. Quick starts for the Spartans. I really like Tom Izzo when he said, we think that we can guard their guards. We're worried about their interior game. There are some really neat matchups here. Ranger just inside the arc for an opening two. And he always extends the defense as being the big man that can step out. McLean, who didn't wow. score in the first matchup, is on the board already. Did not score a single point in the first matchup. Jim, that was a premeditated move. When you come out in basketball and say, I'm taking my man and taking him right to the hole, McLean just had this in his mind before this game ever started. Normally you say, take what the defense will give you. He just took it to the defense there. He backed in Morris Peterson and drew the foul on him. That's interesting. And we're talking about a guy that really never looks to score first. He's on Cleves, so you've got no advantage for Cleves in this case in regard to strength and power. There's a switch. Ranger outside. Cleves got a big man. They're going to get the ball back to Cleves and not let him switch back. Double up on Hudson and foul. Pushed from behind by Cook. Now, something I'm seeing uh, very early in this ball game. There are some bad mismatches that Illinois is going to switch as frequently as they've shown so far. There you had Johnson on Cleves. And you can rotate the ball back out, get it to Cleves, and let him go one and one. Ranger left open again. Raptor picks up the loose ball. Both Illinois guards, terrific rebounders, Bradford and Williams. An Illinois team that's 21 and 8 on the year, but closed the season 12 and 2, all against Big Ten competition. Now this is about as healthy as Illinois has been all year. The only thing held them back were the constant injuries. Johnson is firing on a three. Michigan State quickly now on the break. Peterson lost the handle, and Illinois strips it away. Williams, freshman, guns, three-pointer, way short, close. Ooh, Johnson saves it. Way out to Bradford, good play. Good recovery by Bell, too, realizing that Bradford has no limit to his range, so he got out there quickly. Bradford, three-pointer. Illinois not going inside early in this game. I think they're making a mistake. That'll let Cook touch it a little bit. Please pull up. Short, McLean pulls it away. Both teams playing at a pace taking away what they'd like to do best. Inside the plane, thought about it too this long. Is, this is not Illinois basketball in this particular game, and you can see huh, Michigan State's Tom Izzo saying the same thing. Slow this game down a little bit. Get your bearings. People who say this game doesn't mean anything, you can tell it means one thing. All these kids are competitors. They're wanting to beat that opponent. Yeah, there's a lot of intensity. Yes, you can see is. it right here is one play by Lucas Johnson, but by Bell outside. Not in a shooting situation. Yeah, there is no love lost between these teams. I mean, not only great competitors uh, in the Big Ten, but a lot of these kids come from the same areas. And so they, uh, they know each other extremely well. Jason Richardson checks in for Michigan State. Here's something interesting, too, Jim. When you start talking about common opponents, here's one of those that throw out the window. They both played at Michigan. Michigan State won by 51, and Illinois lost by four. <laughs> so, you know, those guys sit around and say, well, they played this team, and uh, that's not but a 55-point difference there. So defense by Michigan State. That 51-point win by Michigan State eight days ago, including the first worst loss, I should say, ever on the Wolverines, 114-63. Here's the zone. Look for Bradford to try to get out, out beyond it and get a pass for the jump shot. Not there. Ball was touched. Nice piece of referee in there. The ball was touched. Shot clock, though. Look at Down this. The six. Williams gets it back. And finally, Michigan State. This helter-skelter pace at the start. Well, I think that uh, Illinois would be smart to go down to Cook a time or two, let him touch it, get some feel for the half-court offense. Richardson in the game now. Another athlete that can go in sky. He's got McLean on him. Constant switching. You notice there, Illinois switches on every screen. Leaves wants to go one on one. Put it up wildly. Well, I tell you, he steps back to Nolan. Does the claim? 
Johnson to Cook, and Cook draws the foul. Now, McLean, so versatile. He can play so many positions for you. Well, well, you know, when you break him down as a player, Jim, can he shoot the ball well? The answer is no. Is he a great dribbler? The answer is no. Is he a great leaper? The answer is no. Uh, does he have the right size for his position? The answer is no. You know the only thing he knows how to do? Help you win basketball games. And so there's a place for that kind of guy on any team in the country. Whistle on Hudson, his first. Two for Cook. Now, what may happen in this game, but because we see no rhyme or reason to how the teams are playing early on, may be the benches. Illinois comes off with some players that uh, can be instant offense and defense. Yesterday we saw Kripalia, who was the MVP of the game as far as how we saw it. Uh, he isn't in there yet. I I'm anxious to see when Lon Kruger will go to this bench. Iowa State with an explosive start on Oklahoma, doubling them up in the first half. Peterson, three is short, front of the rim. That's McLean again. Oh, and a double dribble the referee never saw. He grabbed the ball and put it back down again. Illinois showed its depth yesterday. 11 different players scored in the win against Penn State. McLean, not wise, shot that time. I think that it'd be smart for McLean to sit down a little bit. He's sky high for this game. An Illinois product who wants to do it today. Well, Jimmy, this clock's important in this game, but that clock's important to college basketball. And that's all we have until the exclusive first announcement of the NCAA tournament field. And let me ask you, is wait Michigan a minute, wait, State... Wait, 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 I thought you made the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are so no. fired up. You are so wired today. It's my favorite day, what can I say? I mean, you know... Normally, the fans of the country, when you say, and now here are the number one seeds, the number two, I mean, they just assume that's I've done. lost my touch. No, you haven't lost your touch. I mean, oh, let me ask you, is Michigan State playing for a number one seed? If it loses no, here, I think they are a number one seed, okay. whether they Win lose or, lose. or not. Okay. But these kids are playing. That, that, that's totally immature. You can just tell the way they're playing. I, I love Nolan Richardson's attitude. Let's forget about the NCAA tournament. We're playing for today. And I think all of what we're seeing out right here is these teams are not playing very well because they are such great competitors. It's a sloppy game so far. Traveling against Hudson. Now, I will say this. There are those out there who believe it's so crowded at the top right now, factoring in the likes of Temple. Maybe Cincinnati's chance is still alive. You can see in the regular season, Michigan State shared it uh, as far as conference regular season with Ohio State. Ohio State lost its first-round game here to Penn State. There are those who believe that maybe Michigan State is vulnerable, and I would think that Tom Izzo has stressed that point a little bit to his team as well. And if it loses here, who knows? Could maybe cost them a one. I, I agree with you, though. I don't think so. <laughs> nice Please. decision by the team, Cleese. Now, he had an open jump shot, but he really has good decision processes on the floor. Instead of taking the jumper, he got it to a better person, gets it back, and makes a nice play for an easy shot. The first field goal in the game by either side in over four and a half minutes. McLean really wanted to be down in the low post. There's the answer for Illinois. Now, let Cook touch the ball inside. A lot of good things are going to happen after, after that. He has such excellent hands, even though he gives up some power. He can play in that low post. A double team. Yep, they whip it around to the open man. It's Bell. Two-point shot. Spins out. He chases it down, though. Gives it up. Hudson for the two. Charlie Bell, solid basketball player who really didn't show up much yesterday, but he's the kind of guy who's had some 20-point games this year, can come up big, always gives you good defense. He's on Bradford now. Bradford with a three. Just a couple now. He's made one in every college game he's played in. Bell up ahead to the trailers. Peterson. Again, please realizing that Bell can really get up in the air and has the good hands. Normally, that would not be a good pass to the typical college basketball player, but he knows what Bell's capable of. And Peterson, with that great speed, just was able to outleg the plane. Bradford over Bell for two to the tie of the date. Boy, I love these matchups in the backcourt. Bradford and Cleves, Bell and Williams. Oh, 
made the statement earlier today that Cleves is the best point guard in college basketball. I really think that he is. When you take everything in consideration, defense, offense, leadership, ability to pass, break down the defense. Don't miss a minute of the NCAA tournament brackets presented by Oldsmobile. They'll be updated live during today's selection show. For the latest coverage online, click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online. The keyword is CBS Sportsline. Some changes in the Illinois lineup. Claude Paulier has come in. There he is, such a key yesterday, number 33. Also, brought in Marcus Griffin, number 52, and number 32, Cleotis Brown. Three subs for Illinois. And Illinois does not fall off when these three guys come in. As a matter of fact, I think for this kind of game, they have a big advantage over Michigan State. You remember last year, when Antonio Smith, Michigan State really was the factor with a great guy down in the in the paint they don't have that this year and that's a big difference between their club saw the fresh up for Michigan State Adam Ballinger committed a foul in his first minute of action as they say Ballinger is not a Smith Brown Apollye up on the boards again but he pushes over the back just a sophomore, really one of the key reasons why a year ago an undermanned Illinois team was somehow able to win three games as the 11 seed in the Big Ten all the way to the final. They advanced only to really run out of gas in the second half to lose the championship 67-50 to Michigan State. Well, I'll tell you, Illinois getting away with murder on their switches. That time they had two men on Peterson, nobody on Hudson. Hudson, Griffin on him, Cleves left open, jumper, too strong. Follow-up try, was in and out by Richardson. That's Richardson, and we saw him go up in the Connecticut game we had earlier this year on CBS. There's no limit to how high he can go. There he is again. Bradford struggling from the, the perimeter today. Away from the ball. There's a nice job by Frankie Williams getting out on Peterson. You notice when Peterson comes down court, he sets up beyond the three-point line on the wings every time. Illinois not giving him that shot. The whistle was on Griffin. Timeout on the floor. Well, the countdown to March Madness, two and a half hours plus. The young man may be already into it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about bubble teams, Billy. Uh, this is a list that you've uh, compiled. Fresno State, you don't think they're in, huh? They're not assured? I don't know. I, I'd like to see Jerry Tarkini get that club in. They beat Tulsa three times this year. Now they won their conference championship, but don't have the automatic berth. How about Notre Dame sitting there, Jim, on that bubble path? Boy, they've had some quality wins, but that, that Providence and the BC losses really hurt them, don't you think? There's some real quality wins during the season, but I'm feeling they might be the, the team that's on the outside looking in. There's the 2-3 zone matching up that we saw Illinois use yesterday. Griffin in the middle, big wingspan, trying to patrol that pain area. Be a good guy to attack from behind, but Granger doesn't see the opening. I don't think Griffin realizes what's behind him. Bell. Richardson follows up for the slam. Richardson is amazing. Had 12 rebounds against Minnesota. Big games against North Carolina. And those uh, 14 points and 7 rebounds against Connecticut, which is really the coming out. He, he will be a major star in the Big Ten. Brown, short jumper. No. Ballinger with a flat for the rebound. Illinois not taking advantage of this. Uh, well, here they do it for the first time. Take advantage of the subs. Sean Harrington bounces it over to Brown for two. Tough pass. He got it there. Sean Harrington just checking in with the assist. Illinois has the superior bench. And you know, in a tournament where you play three days in a row, that has to help. Mike Chappelle has come in for the Spartans, number 20. Working the baseline, now comes over to touch it for the first time. But all of Michigan State's bench is on the perimeter. Illinois has a bench both ways. They can come in the backcourt with the likes of a Harrington and Brown, and they can come inside as well. Five on the shot clock. Ranger knows it, fires it, oh, gets it. That's a three. Huge basket. You know that Granger is not going to put the ball on the floor and dribble to the basket. So as a defender, he should always be out there in his face. 
Sets the pit. Williams takes advantage. Unable to finish the Brown. Stopped by Ballinger. They say got a piece of the arm. Are they going to call it on Richardson? Brown on Richardson. Brown, a starter last year, now coming off the bench, but can be an explosive score. Monday on CBS, don't miss the show that Entertainment Weekly calls sitcom royalty. Kevin James, Leah Rimini, and Jerry Stiller, the King of Queens, Monday on CBS. The Otis Brown. A senior, really the only senior seeing any action for this Illini team. Victor uh, Chukadebe is a fellow that uh, you would have thought when this season started would be seeing action, but he has had all kinds of physical problems, and so that's taken away his opportunity to contribute. The point is, with that depth that you mentioned, you've got virtually everybody coming back it gets significant minutes except for this man well Corey Bradford at 32 minutes a game is playing more than anybody else on this team but then it drops off the guys playing basically around 20 minutes a game he and Frank Williams the only ones over 30 Brown bangs home two one point lead for the Spartans the game staying tight as it did last year for a while until the Michigan State just blew it open before the half Here's the switches that Michigan State so far not taking advantage of. Granger tipped out, back to him. Bell retrieves it. Nice as it is. Hudson, Robert from behind. Griffin hit with his second. Two fouls playing in the zone defense on the inside. Not getting the production out of Griffin they need right here. Lon Kruger in his four years at Illinois, one and ten when facing a top 10 ranked team the highest ranked the team he has defeated Minnesota back in 1997 when it was seventh ranked now, a win today would uh, be the highest ranked team his fighting line I have defeated in his four years Michigan State four in one poll five in the other well the highest ranked team I remember him ever beaten was Connecticut in the NCAA tournament when he was at Florida huh? You know, I was talking to him on Friday about that, the highest ranked team, and he reminded me when he was at Kansas State, he beat Missouri when Missouri was ranked number one. Nice piece of information, James. I thought I was all over it with the Florida situation. Just happened to discuss it with the coach. But that was uh, the one you're alluding to was down in Miami in the East uh, Regional, and Florida went on to the final four that year in Charlotte, directed by Lon Kruger. And a man who had a pretty good time in Florida, I mean in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, had a pretty good day today for Arkansas, didn't he? Well, Richardson won the championship there. A nice piece of coaching by Nolan to take his young team to the tournament. Oh. Bradford. I love the way Bradford turns that inner foot in to square him up on the basket, whether he comes off the screen right or left. It's always square to the basket. Never has had the touch here. Saved by Propalia. Bradford doesn't have the numbers. He waits. Kicks it to the corner. Brown with the three. Well, that rebound to Granger. Those were good decisions by Bradford. Knew he had men behind him. Kept using his crossover dribble. How about that, what he just said? He said to Brown, good shot. Showing leadership. He's only a sophomore. Corey Bradford. And you know what? Here comes that teammate of his that he just encouraged with a steal and a dunk. You're right, Billy. You know, you pump up a teammate who has to make a play. Absolutely. Nice job. Illinois in front by one. Eight minutes to go in the half. Well, I'm telling you right now, if Michigan State's a one, Jim, this Illinois team is one of those guys say, give me a dark horse, huh? Turnover. Where would you see it, Illinois, <laughs> in, in the brackets? Maybe as high as a three if they win today. Probably in that three, four, five range. Did those teams down by one? The shooting from three-point land is uh, pretty atrocious at this point. One of 14 combined. Illinois 
Jim, for seven. Jim, there's a reason for that. Neither team has developed an inside the paint game yet. And a lot of times when you try to attack from the perimeter first before you establish something inside, uh, you start taking shots that you really don't want. Now, Brown did miss the wide open jumper, but a lot of these have been kind of like desperation you know, or maybe quick jumpers. They'll settle down. Plus, there's some pretty good perimeter defense being played. There's Cook stepping out again, the kind of shot I'm talking about. He can get a better shot early in the clock than that one. Bradford's had some good looks. Uh, he's the one player that's shot uh, without stress, but he's 0 for 3 from out there. And one of the things that happens when you take shots before your teammates anticipate you're going to take them, they're never, you're never having your teammates in position to rebound. So it hurts you both ways. And another turnover. At the conclusion of this game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game for each team. Looks Chevrolet like will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over a quarter of a century. Bradford got hit and looked like uh, right in the head or the eye. Time's been called. I don't think that there's a... Look on the left side here. Oh, he got popped elbow, with an yeah, elbow. He sure yeah. got popped right there by Hudson. Unintentional. Yep. It's going down... Uh, I think he's got uh, a little bit of work to be done. Oh, he, he, he's, quick, oh yeah. he's going down again. They better help him a little bit. It's a tough break for Illinois. The teammates uh, very nervously looking at him here. You'll see the elbow come right up here. And oh, God, I'm running yep, bridge of the nose. Yep. Hudson with the elbow. He goes straight down. Woozy right here. You can hear a pin drop in this place, Jim. Boy, and I'll tell you the the factor of injuries. Trying to work your way to a championship. I thought, Jim, you you pointed out you had heard earlier today that interview with Bob Huggins in terms of the quality of his team and Kenyon Martin in that situation and how a quality kid that Kenyon was in regard to his comments and the way he came back after his injury to go out and support his team uh, at that ball game. Be interesting to see what the committee does with some of these injuries. Uh, Bob Huggins uh, made it pretty clear. He, he feels his team still deserving of a number one seed even without Kenyon Martin. Well, I think there's two questions. They deserve the seed because of how well they play. The question is, are they one of the top four teams in the country without him, and the answer to that is, I don't think so. Uh, you just don't know, though. It's not well, fair I to say on the one game, you know? I mean, you, so, well, sometimes you life's know, not fair. Take a team that's 28-3 with uh, you know, talent like Pete Michael and Jermaine Tate, Kenny Satterfield. And, oh, I, I'm not, hey, nobody's looking know, forward the, to playing Cincinnati. The thing Huggins pointed out, you know, Kenyon was in foul trouble a lot this year, and so we played a lot quality time this year without him. Well, I don't want anybody to start telling me that he didn't mean much to that team if they ever saw him play that game in Chicago against the ball. Ranger with a three. Say one thing that helped Cincinnati's case, though, is that, again, the team that beat him went on to win the conference tournament. St. Louis, it's not like they, they, they lost to a team that was waxed the next day. They, 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 they played a team that... Well, plus the emotion for the kids on the floor by right. Cincinnati that day, wondering about his situation. Uh, not taking anything away from St. Louis's win. Here we have rebounding advantages again. Michigan State. Bell from the side, yes. And Michigan State with a little flurry here. Five unanswered out of the break. Boy, Cleves makes great decisions on the break. Illinois calls a timeout. Finite days. Bradford goes out, and Illinois is down four. Well, the road to the Final Four all gets started today here Jim, on CBS. This looks like a space shot or something there. Oh, they took it away from me. You know, it seems like we... What are you like about, in, Central Connecticut inside, State? No, no, we're inside. There's Central Connecticut State in. But you know, right. these are teams' first time in the tournament. Yeah. Southeast Missouri State, do you see a Cinderella in that bunch right there? Wow. For the tournament? I'll tell you what, I think there's too much depth in the conferences like the SEC and the Big Ten uh, for those teams to be competitive against them. Hey, doesn't this look like a spaceship or something? Like that, they have a clock up in here. Looks like it was going to the moon or something. Looks like a like an eye drop. Yeah, that's weird. 
One team that was not on that list was Wright State. Yeah, how about which, believe it or not, may have pulled off the biggest upset of the 90s in college basketball regular season play, beating that Michigan State this year. That, to me, is, is almost close, but not close, to Chaminade beating Virginia. Remember that? That, that, was, that, that was in the 80s. That yeah. would have been the upset oh, of the 80s. Okay. Right? That was like 83. I mean, that, that was, was Samson, Samson was there. Samson was like a sophomore. Yeah. So, I remember getting that score uh, because they played in Hawaii. Getting that score, and I said, no, that's got to be, you know, uh, got to be a misprint. Yeah, sure. The Silver Swords, Chaminade. <laughs> right. But think of a bigger one in the, in, well, it was just barely in the 90s. It was December 30th, 1999. Hudson comes up short. Cook has the rebound. Wright State ends up with a sub-500 record effect this year, but beat Michigan State, a likely number one seed in the tournament. How do you figure? Cleach wasn't there. That was one thing. McClain swatted away. Steve McClear. By the McClain leader. does not have the size to go down inside and make turnaround jump shots. Johnson tries to draw the charge. No call. Leeds gives it up. Bell shot. Williams with a block. Back out to Peterson. Still uh, a real scrappy game. Hudson. McClain comes over. And will they call it on him? Well, McClain is really fired up today. But he has to start using his head a little bit. Called on McLean his first all-time Big Ten titles. Now, this is regular season titles we're talking about. Billy? Yep. Purdue, that might surprise yes, some people. Yes, it does. Purdue, of course, their history one. goes back a long way. You know somebody that hasn't won any of them. Team right, right here Western. in this town, Northwestern. Never been in the NCAA. I think next year in the play-in game, they ought to let Northwestern play in as one of the teams. They hosted one, but never got the play-in. They hosted the very first Final Four, 1939. You would have thought that Bob Dikas could have maybe switched over from baseball to basketball and helped out the cause, our producer. They led the Big Ten in RBIs. Now, Hudson at the line. Why can't, if Duke and Stanford can win, why can't Northwestern? That me. Should be able to happen, right? Don't you think? Well, they came close to going after Tommy Amick. He proved he could go from Duke to Seton Hall to win. Boy, Cook setting up nicely inside there, battling with Hudson. Not looking for it. Brown spins out. Rapalia battling. Ball free and taken away by Richardson. David Thomas has come in also for Michigan State. How about that crossover dribble? Cleves puts it up. Rapalia. I tell you, when Rapalia comes into the ball game, it balances some of that rebounding edge that Michigan State normally has. Thomas on a reach. Beginning Tuesday, April 4th, CBS presents an extraordinary eight-night television event. Falcone followed the FBI's best agent as he goes undercover inside the family. Begins Tuesday, April the 4th. Jim, there's a little check on Corey. I, I, I don't see him back out on the on, on the floor yet. Yeah. yeah, he's not on the bench. Nope. Uh, he's probably x-raying. Oh, 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 nice. oh, yeah, lays it in for two. He's going to get a lot of minutes in this game because he really creates a presence inside. Nice head, head move by Cook. Williams doesn't switch over. Richardson and one. Now Richardson's given up some inches there. But believe me, forget about how they list him in height. He plays like a 6'10 guy. As the season's gone on, has he progressed at the uh, level uh, that you thought he would as far as working into the system, contributing to nope. the base team? No, but I think that the, the injury that he suffered probably set him back just at the time he was ready to turn the corner. He had the, you know, the, the chest problem, and just when he was ready to make his move, he had to sit. Jim, when you see a, a screening situation right here, and you always say, screen your man. I don't mean to screen your own man, but here's what Cleves does. He cuts through here, and Capalia under the time. Watch what Cleves does. He goes in and screens his man. 
on his own team. The object is to screen the guy on the other team. Illinois down six. Oh, boy. You can't let Williams get inside. He just took Cleves one-on-one -on -one that time. No help. Been a nine-to-four advantage, though, for Michigan State since Bradford went out. Beautiful pass. And one again. Wow, did Granger thread it that time. And the tremendous hands on the inside. This is some pass. Sits right down, bounces it through. Peterson with the ability to go ahead and take it across the lane. We saw yesterday, remember on that cool curl move that Peterson stopped, didn't get his jumper, continued right on through. He really has a good sense of moving without the ball. Peterson will graduate in May in family community services. His last uh, scholastic obligation is just fulfilling an internship at Parkwood YMCA in Lansing. He has played more games at Michigan State in basketball than any other player. Near steal by Richardson. Richardson's enjoying playing in this game. There's the help on Williams, so he didn't have the open look. Herring's away out there. Cook rebound, tough pass. Yep, no chance for Brown to be able to catch that one. Illinois now 0 for 9 from 3. Coming up on Pins Oil at the half, Greg Gumbo and Clark Kellogg live from the NCAA Hall of Champions in Indianapolis. Get caught up in all the scores and highlights and the latest information here on Selection Sunday. And I don't think we've seen Michigan State totally dominate the glass. And that's kept this game uh, close, but they've got a seven-point working margin right now. Cook clears for Illinois. Illinois has led at halftime of its last 12 games. The last team, team to lead them at the half was Michigan State. Here's the steal. Richardson to please might come back to him. Well, oh. probably a little tap pass. <laughs> Richardson couldn't get the space that he needed to elevate for the shot. And how about that smart move that he did, tapping it back to Cleves. And a three-on-one break. Largest lead of the game for either side. Nine-point advantage. Last year, last year when Michigan State beat Illinois, they scored 14 points off of turnovers in the championship game. Just had two right there. Capolia hacked on the outside. Well, there's a case uh, in experience. If you're Richardson, you're going to make that steal. Two things you've got to do. First, move your feet to get closer to the offensive player. And second, if you're going to reach in, have your hands come from under the ball up as opposed to slapping down. Second on Richardson. He'll go out, replaced by Bell. Ballinger also removed. Pretty solid minutes by Richardson for uh, Tamizu's club. Is those club. One and one for Kripalia. I said it earlier, Billy, Tom Izzo directing Michigan State this year to a third straight 20-win season. And what's remarkable, you would think with all the history, the championship with the Magic Johnson, Greg Kelzer team, etc., that's the first time in school history they've had three straight 21 seasons. You know, Judd Heathcote's not going to appreciate you bringing that up. And Judd he Heathcote was a trained, great coach. He, he's the guy that trained Tom. Yeah, he I was a, a, a I guarantee Tom was an assistant for 12 years. I guarantee in Indianapolis, Judd's going to come up, get right in your face, and say, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> he's one of my all-time favorites. He's but I'm not pinning it on Judd. This is in the history of this program for 100 years. Well, I thought he coached that team for 100 years. Oh, now, now he's going to be in your face. <laughs> Coach Heathcote, though, winning the championship in 79 and There's mentored Tom Izzo, who was his assistant for 12. Now, Jim, one of the things on that particular replay right there, did that ball have a chance to go in? College basketball, you can sweep it after it's off the glass as long as it doesn't look like it's on the way down. That's right. And you also can get called for goaltending if the ball has no chance of going in. That one looks like it'd be short. Leaves inside to Peterson. Now, do you think those guys have ever played together? I mean, that was eye contact. Cleves knew exactly where Peterson was going to be. Beautiful play.
Just a minute to go in the half. Double-digit lead now for State. Time to get the ball down inside some. McLean trying to do too much one-on-one. -on -one. Six on the shot clock. A lot of one-on-one -on -one here. Not Illinois basketball game. Jim, for those people who saw yesterday, Mateen please shoot his little floating shot that had no spin on it whatsoever. Here you see the pass that he's able to throw that way. And one of the things that's so great is a ball without a lot of spin on it is much easier to catch. So there you see the knuckle ball going up. It's a perfect ball to catch. Great eye contact between the two. You see it right there. Look at how easy that ball is to catch. No spin whatsoever. Thieves has that down to a science. All-time assist man in the Big Ten. Big Ten history. Had 20 last weekend against Michigan. Setting the Michigan State and the Big Ten single game record. McLean hits the front end of a one and one You know what I liked about that? He had eight points, 20 assists. I mean, he's not a guy that worries about how his team is successful. The 20 assists, just two off the all-time NCAA record, held by three players, Tony Furley of Charleston Southern, Avery Johnson of Southern, and Sherman Douglas of Syracuse one time had 22 assists in a game. Well, I'm familiar with two of the three. Five-second differential, shot clock to game clock. And if you're Michigan State, you'd almost like to go ahead Make sure Illinois has no chance whatsoever. Take it right down as far as you can before you got to put the shot up. Timeout. Tom Izzo does this all the time. You know, he loves to set up a play. And remember yesterday the play that they used with a double roll. Let's take a look at our NASDAQ Big Ten moment. The 1976 National Championship game between Michigan and Indiana in Philadelphia. The only time two Big Ten teams have met in the title game. Michigan had a six-point halftime lead, but in the second half, Kent Benson led the Hoosiers to the victory. Ricky Green and Steve Brody of Michigan falling to the Hoosiers. Well, Jim, that's the last time we have had an undefeated champion in college basketball. Certainly many can make the argument that that was the greatest team that's ever played in the college game, the 76 Indiana Club. And you know what's interesting in that Final Four? Two teams entered the Final Four undefeated that year. Rutgers was the other. Rutgers was the other. They lost, dropped both games. Those were the days when you had to play in, I mean, the consolation game in the Final Four. Coach Tom Young had uh, stars like Bill Sellers and Mike Dabney. I won't go into the exact comments or the quotes from Tom Young, who's a great guy. But uh, he had uh, a very interesting comment when people asked about the Rutgers team uh, at that uh, Final Four press conference. Eddie Jordan, James Jammer Bailey. Here's Cleves oh, off the glass for two. I think he shocked Illinois. He thought that they're going to use the clock a little more. Illinois has time, though. Four seconds. Williams stuck. He's got a big man on him. Ballinger. Michigan State went zone on Brown launches. Oh! A three at the front of their first of the day. Can you believe that shot beyond? The well-conceived defense of Michigan State. Some range. They get a three at last, and it's a fluke. They were pinned at midcourt. Ballinger was guarding Williams. Well, yes, Billy. great timeout by Tom Izzo to set up, first of all, how they're going to get the shot, and then to go to the zone and look at where that shot was from. You'd have to say, what, 30 feet? I think that's about right. Yeah, that's about 30 feet. Incredible range. And he buried it. Cleotis Brown brings him with an eight. <laughs> Mateen says, wait a minute, that was after the horn. Sorry about that, Mr. Cleves. The basket counts. And it's 35-27 at halftime, Michigan State. Right now, let's go to Greg Gumbel at the NCAA Hall of Champions in Indianapolis for Pennzoil at the half. <laughs> the Big Ten Championship presented by NASDAQ. Okay, let's take a look, Jim. I talked about the switching that, that Illinois was doing early in the ballgame, and I thought it was getting them in trouble, and it did in a number of occasions. We're going to see an opportunity here for Granger to lose his man and get a wide-open shot. Now, let's take a look at it right here. 
Granger has got a man on him. He's going to go all the way around here and watch. The screen, I mean, the switch does not probably take place here. It again will not take place there. And watch how Granger gets a wide open shot. Nobody's on him. Then they realize it. Now they try to switch back. It's too late. He's got the shot. And I really don't think that Michigan State took advantage of that as much as they can if you're going to get that kind of switching. Michigan State leads by eight. And, and CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message in a word for your local station. And by Merrill Lynch. Be quick, be smart, be bullish. Michigan State leads at halftime thus far in this Big Ten tournament. The team that led at halftime is 9-0. Corey Bradford will return. His nose is too swollen, they're saying right now, to x-ray. They believe it's bruised but not broken. Yeah. Billy Packer courtside. It'll be very difficult. He has a lot of gauze stuffed up, up in that nose. It'll be awful difficult for him to breathe. You can see he gets hit with the elbow on the way down by Hudson. Went right to the floor, and after he tried to get up, remember, Jimmy, he went to the floor again. You look at the stats, Jim, uh, something that jumps out for you is field goal shooting percentage. Yesterday, Illinois had the best day they've had all year, shooting 60%. Now they're at 31. For Michigan State, uh, they held Northwestern right here in Chicago to 17%, so it's not unusual for them to hold a club down. Here we see that uh, three-point shooting, neither team doing well. In Illinois, of course, the one three they made with the desperation at the end of the half. Let's see how Bradford is able to handle it now back out here after spending a large part of the first half in the locker room. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's shown a lot of courage because he's out here with potentially a broken nose, no mask on it whatsoever, and he's just wanting to play. There's the two three zone set up by uh, Michigan State. Five on the shot clock. They don't seem to be aware of it. Two on the shot clock. Bradford launches. Well, for him, I wanted to see that one go in. It would have been great. Lucas Johnson just banged it off the leg of Peterson to keep it for Illinois. Well, what happened there is that that ball was thrown all the way down to the other end, remember, and it took him a long time to get back into the half-court set. They stay right in the zone. Ball three. Well, Ken shoot from out there. And that one dips in and out. Flat shot. Cleves runs it. Thought about going to Bell. Decides otherwise. Now he gives it up. Charlie Bell for two. Boy, that was just great decision making by Cleves. You know, as you said, Jim, we had the perfect angle. Looked like he might go to Bell. He was smart enough to say, wait a minute. Even if I give it to Bell, he doesn't have a good angle to shoot. Lucas Johnson with a perfect stroke for three. Now we see the two big men stepping out. There's Hudson. Good no call by the official. Johnson tried to draw a charge away from the ball. Andre Hudson ran into him, knocked him to the floor, no whistle. Hudson backing in on Cook. And he'll go to the line for a three-point play. Excellent drop step by Hudson. Now, he knows he's playing against a freshman, a freshman who has been told in the scouting report, the man's a left-hander, he's going left all the time, so he drop steps and comes back right. Watch this right here. Bolt. Cook has been told he's a left-hander, a left-hander. Don't let him go left. You get the experienced veteran. Takes him to the cleaners on that one. Hudson 7-2 and two today. He had 14-11 and 11 in the one matchup with Illinois this season. Again, if you're just joining us, Michigan State beat it by 25 in East Lansing. Well, any coach would love to have a Hudson. You know, night in, night out, he's going to give you the solid performance. Johnson goes. He hit the three on the last trip. This time he penetrates for two. For Michigan State right now, what you want to do is to force Illinois to have to play a lot of defense. Don't take bad shots. You've got a working margin here. Wide open now. Nobody comes to help on the double. Snaps it over to Granger. Ten on the shot clock. Bell. Inside Hudson. Two more. And there he used that left hand. On the other side. Up ahead though. McLean can't handle it. Michigan State ball. That was not a good decision. You're down ten. You've got to get into your offense. You can't take a chance on that kind of pass. Jim, you just think that what a difference a year makes. Illinois coming in last year in this game, just about totally worn out, both emotionally and 
physically, having played three tough games as an 11 seed to work their way to a championship. And uh, really weren't given much chance to do anything. But in this game, I still think they have a chance to make a move here. A lot of people were holding the breath a year ago as they could have taken a spot away from someone. Peterson with a three. Not the case today. Both of these teams assured of being in the tournament. Michigan State a likely one. Illinois anywhere from a three to, let's say, a five seed. In fact, I talked to Ron Kruger after Bradford hit the winning three on Friday. I said, how much do you think this win was worth in the seedings? He said, probably about a half seed. I think he came here as a six. Maybe we're now kind of hugging the five line. We beat Penn State. We're probably on the south side of a five, nearing a four. Won't it be interesting to see how Indiana re reacts to that loss? I mean, we're talking about a team that uh, proved that they can play and beat anybody in the United States on a given night. When you start looking for dark horse type teams, if they come in emotionally ready to play, they could be just a, a, a club like that. Where do you think they'll land in the tournament? I don't know, Jim. Mars like a C. What do you think? Five? Four, five, maybe? Cook? Yes. Illinois doing a nice job getting that ball down inside. Now they need to get some stops here. Down 11. Well, they are going into Hudson. He's got Cook on his back. Cook better start trying to front Hudson because he's just giving him a, a, a real schooling in there. Michigan State has not missed from the field in this half. Five for five. Look out. Peterson with the steal. McLean from behind and no foul. Peterson with two. Peterson a lot faster. Now Peterson hit Peterson, a cheerleader, but unfortunately he gets up. I hope she's all right. Peterson just quicker. Not only to the ball, but he's got more open court speed than does McLean. State has its largest lead of the day. Bradford trying to do it all at once. Give him a lot of credit for courage here. Lucas Johnson takes it out. Yeah, the three. It looks like they're, they're almost desperate here. Yeah. Like it's a last-minute situation. 16 minutes to go. And you think that those two veterans right there are starting to feel a championship? They know that feeling. You know, it's kind of interesting when you think of the great tradition in the Big Ten. This is only their third year of the conference uh, championships. Michigan winning the first time for Michigan State last year. Remember Robert Trailer putting the team on his back and taking them all, all the way through the championship in the inaugural uh, tournament. Next year, the Big Ten tournament will return here to the United Center, but in 2002, it will be contested in Indianapolis. There's the 2-3 zone. Griffin trying to post something down in low, but uh, Hudson beat him to the spot. Johnson tipped it once, tries to save it into the arms of they, Michigan State. They've got the numbers. Cleves will know that. Bell. McLean has it. Johnson is still at yeah. the other end. He should have stayed there because he couldn't help out. He would have had an easy shot. Bradford, three-pointer. Yes. He's injured, but he's still playing. Corey Bradford. Before that miss by Michigan State a moment ago, to go back to the end of the first half, they had made 10 straight from the field. Peterson to the charge. basket, and yes, it is a charge. And I don't think the basket should count either. Here we see Johnson going for that ball. Throws it back in. Gives himself up to the curtain. Well, they're down 12, but it's not curtains yet for the Illini here in the Big Ten Final. ...with his team. He does a... Iron City fist right there. Billy, let's look at the teams that are in uh, with automatic bids. Tell me the 16 seed. Well, if Winthrop's a 16, let's not send him to Winston-Salem. Let's give him a trip like we did last year, right? All right, there's one. How about send him to Connecticut State? Blue Devils? Okay. I think so. Huh? Jackson State and South Carolina State. Give him a good trip. We could have the battle of the Blue Devils then if Central Connecticut State ends up being, say, the 16 in the East and Duke's the one. We have Peterson. about an hour and a half to go before we know. You'll know it here first. Peterson with three fouls, having an outstanding game. As you said, Jim uh, picked as one of the players of the year in the Big Ten this year. And they stay right in this zone. Two-three zone. Griffin and someone reached in. Hudson. Griffin set up his mind that he could 
operate in that low post against the two three zone on Ballinger and wanted to put that ball up. Tom is over that timeout. You wouldn't know his team was up by 12. Uh, he's he's a competitor. Every game he goes into. And you know the other thing I like about both of these coaches. Not only do they compete, but uh, they they really have a great disposition during the game with their teams and with their with their fellow coaches. And then when the game is over. I mean, they're the kind of guys you want to go shake hands with whether you win or lose. Third on Hudson, and Griffin will shoot one more. Granger will replace Hudson, and Chappelle comes in for Bell. You know, when you look at this uh, Michigan State team, uh, Jim, and, and you take teams that, that went a long way last year in the NCAA tournament, what are they losing from last year? Because obviously there is a major changeover. I think Smith's presence in the center made Michigan State last year tougher to play against than this team. Now, I realize all of these guys are a year older, more experienced, uh, and, uh, and more schooled in playing basketball and playing in tournament basketball, but they don't have the presence in the middle they had last year. That's going to be McLean, who wouldn't give up on Cleves, who took it as a challenge. Well, you're talking about a Michigan State Final Four team of a year ago. Right. Well, let me just say this. Monday... Grapevine. Critics are calling it the smartest sitcom since Friends. Christy Swanson stars in an all-new Grapevine Monday on CBS right after King of Queens. All right, Billy, last year's Michigan State team, granted, there's a lot of the same players here involved, but last year's Michigan State, State team versus this year, which one wins? I think last year's team. I think that uh, although Klein did not shoot well in the NCAA tournament, I think Smith's presence made them a lot different. I mean, he could shut you down defensively on the inside and was a powerful rebound. Cleves at the top of the key with a three. Well, we sat here a year ago watching them win the Big Ten title and you really felt it was a Final Four team. Oh, yeah. Like you were. Do you have that same sense about Michigan State? I think they could be there. I think this year is a lot different than last year in, in the whole national picture. But uh, I think last year's team would be a team that uh, not only could get to the Final Four, I really think they probably could win it. Ballinger open. Chappelle doesn't get it to him until it's too late. Nice cut by Cleves. Granger does the right thing. Get the ball back in the hands of the guy that can make it happen for the whole club. Cleves again. Oh! Two threes in a row for Mateen. You don't see that often. MVP of this tournament last year and probably will be this year if he keeps this up. You know, Jim, he had a chance to be the first player in the Big Ten since Jerry Lucas did it in 60, 61, and 62, be the player of the year in the league three years in a row. He didn't make it this year, but has two of those awards. Didn't make it partly due to the fact he only played half the season. There you go. Because of a stress fracture, Williams draws the foul. In fact, you can really make the argument, one thing about Michigan State is, Cleves now, this is game 18 for him. He's just now rounding into what you would call mid-season form as we approach the tournament. And if you're going to give uh, Michigan State some uh, some uh, credence in the fact that where would they have been if he'd have played all year, what are you going to do with Temple, with Pepe Sanchez? They only lost two games with him out of the lineup. There's Cleves putting up the jumper. Two threes in a row. His outside shooting always having come under such scrutiny. But I think that his shot looks a lot better this year than it did last year. We talked about that yesterday. He's got the elevation, much a better arc on his shot. Last year he kind of willed him in. This year he's shooting him in. David Thomas in for Richardson. Thomas who took Cleves' place in a role that he really isn't uh, comfortable with, having to be the point guard when Cleves was out. 14-point lead for State. Michigan State lost some games with him out, remember, at Arizona, the game at Kentucky. They did beat North Carolina during that stretch on the road. About that 89% from the field. It's 8 of 9 in this half. Michigan State, Chappelle, that's the average, 90%. Chappelle, who put uh, Chris Carrawell on the bench when he was Duke, down at Duke. Carrawell now the ACC Player of the Year. Chappelle getting just some uh, backup minutes here at uh, Michigan State, but he's always had talent. Billy, it seems to me, uh, since Bradford got hurt in the first half, like Illinois has never been in sync offensively ever since, even with his return. Is that true? Well, I, I don't think we're seeing Corey Bradford that we know out here right now. I mean, he, he's got to be hurt a little bit. 
Nice rebound. Brown strong. Takes it out of there. He doesn't hit it ahead. Travel. He really had Bradford on the wing. He should have hit it ahead and let Bradford take the jump shot. 16-point lead. Michigan State at the Big Ten Championship. Michigan State has matched its largest lead of the game here in Chicago. Under 12 minutes to go. How about the decision-making a moment ago? Well, here, Illinois? Yeah, here's Brown. Now, what he wants to do here is to deliver the ball to Bradford, who will force the defender to come out on him. At that point, you've got a man here. Bradford can go inside. Or, if this man stays with him, then Brown gets it back, and he goes in for a layup. He doesn't do it. He makes the play more difficult, gets called for the walk, and loses the ball. a little rest. Bell picks it up as the point. Chappelle rejected. That's Cook with a rejection. Good hit ahead. Williams spins and scores. Nice move. With the team Cleves out, if Illinois going to make any move at all, they better make it right now. And they should really pick up their defensive intensity out on the ball. Williams has got to get tighter on Bell. Show him why he's not a point guard. Williams staying off him. Bradford will do it. Seven on the shot clock, Thomas. It's a big possession right here. Oh, bad foul. With four seconds on the shot bad clock. Foul. Mm. Called on Brown. Monday on CBS begins with King of Queens, starring Kevin James and Jerry Stiller, followed by a great find in the new comedy critics are calling the smartest sitcom since Friends. Great find. Then everybody loves Raymond, Becker, and Family Law. Monday on CBS. We have this crew very much looking forward to Monday night, April 3rd, the championship game. And the road to the Final Four about to get started here on CBS this week set the pairings and the brackets here in less than an hour and a half on CBS. Jim, I like the, the coaching by Tom Izzo right now. Look at who's over on that bench. Hudson, Peterson, Richardson, and uh, Mateen Cleese. And he's going to try to steal as many minutes as he can, keeping that group rested to make sure that there's no way Illinois comes back and wins this game. Nice thinking on his part. Williams forced. And Granger underneath. Pressure on Bell if you're Illinois. Little one four set. Thomas open baseline. And no block out on the shooter. That was goaltended by Cook. Tipped up and in by Ballinger. It's not good news for Lon Kruger right here in these uh, last minute and a half. Bradford. Nope. Not going to happen today. These possessions just don't. You never right get there. them back. Yep, they never get them back. And you never get these minutes back where your other opposing coach is able to sit his four key players for three or four minutes so that they're going to be totally rested to come back here for the final push. Ranger leans in. Now a 20-point mark. And if you're Lon Kruger, you might want to call a time here because this is with nine minutes or so to go. Yeah, he does call the time. You just want to say, hey, guys, if we got any chance at all, we really need to settle down here. 9.31 to go. Is there any question Michigan State's the number one seed, Jim? There's no question in my mind and hasn't been here for a couple of days. Let's take a look at our Applebee's tournament favorite. Both involve buzzer beaters. 1991, Michigan State versus Wisconsin Green Bay. First round at Tucson. Steve Smith hit the shot at the buzzer to advance Michigan State to the second round. Wisconsin Green Bay coached by Dick Bennett. Meanwhile, 1989, Illinois faced Big Ten rival Michigan. Final four, Seattle. The game was back and forth all game long. But Michigan's Sean Higgins hit the shot at the buzzer. Here it is on the follow. 
to advance Michigan to the title game, and the Wolverines eventually won. That, is one, of, that was one of the best semifinal games ever played. That's the top your Louisville-Houston game, but uh, awful good. Again, the NCAA basketball championship selection show right here on CBS. The exclusive first announcement, live announcement right here on CBS. You talked about Michigan State being a one seed. What they hope for, and it certainly looks like it'll pan out that way, is Auburn Hills. Auburn Hills would be the regional. Cleveland in the first round, not that far away. And Auburn Hills less than, well, about an hour away. That Ooh, was a good here. That was a great block. The official was out of position and misses the call. Jolly Bell cannot believe it. So it'll be three for Harrington. Well, the 20-point game, I guess the ref can miss uh, a call or two. You see, Bell, watch this. He goes up. All ball. The perfect block. You can't do it any better. Harrington goes on the line. Illinois 13 of 14 from the line today. Now you talked about Auburn Hills. That would be the site of the Midwest Regional. And some might say, well, wait a minute. How can how is that fair? Michigan State gets to be uh, basically at home in the regionals. But they'll also tell you Michigan State, they're still smarting from two years ago when they had to go to the East Regionals in Greensboro and take on North Carolina, which was uh, Chapel Hill, almost the same distance from Greensboro as East Lansing is to Auburn Hills. Well, I remember one, Jim, of great controversy. Remember when uh, Illinois had to go play Kentucky, down in Kentucky, uh, in Ephraim Winter's years at, uh, at Illinois. That was a great ball game. Yes, it was. That was the 1984 season. Kentucky went on to Seattle that year, too. The final four, that was with Bowie and Turpin. Yep, Melvin Turpin, and then Georgetown got a piece of them, and Kentucky couldn't score. Chappelle with five on the shot clock. Long rebound out to Williams. He's got a man ahead. It's Brown. Tough shot, and oh, that was real good. Reach in, foul, pulled on Michigan State. You know, we mentioned uh, Dick Bennett in Wisconsin from yesterday. I was thinking back, and you, you go back in the history, we'll see it right here. Brown made the good catch. Thomas almost got a piece of it. Looks like that ball has got to go in and rolls off the rim. What's this ball? It has got to go in. It defies the law of gravity here. And then finally goes in the other direction. But think it back at Wisconsin. Uh, Ohio State lost to Wisconsin the final uh, regular season game during the Lucas years when they went on their senior year in, in college. And then Magic Johnson, when they went on in 79 to win the national championship, the last regular season game they lost at Wisconsin. Unfortunately for Wisconsin, those weren't games that they were going to the NCAA tournament for uh, uh, a Final Four, rather. Major season. Yeah. One field goal last seven minutes for the Illini. Down 17. Really struggled from the outside today. Only three of 19 from three. Well, Tom Izzo said in our pregame show that he thinks that he can defend the perimeter game of Illinois, and he certainly was right about that. The Otis Brown will head to the line for a couple. Brown's played very aggressively today. As I said, last year, the young man was uh, in that starting lineup. Was a valuable cog to the team. Played very well uh, in this Big Ten tournament. Chukadebe coming into the ball game now, it looks like. Another senior. I guess, you know, was he in the game, Jim? Oh, he must be, because he's standing on the floor with Lon Kruger. He must yeah. have just checked in. I missed that. Leotis Brown has already fired up 11 shots today. That's the most attempts of the season. Very active day for him. Now, look at this. We're down to eight minutes to go in the game. Tom Izzo was able to get almost four or five minutes of rest for his key players, Peterson, Cleves, and Hudson. Against to get here, not even. 
You know, it's interesting. The team please did not know until yesterday that they were not the number one seed. He just assumed that they were. And Ohio State yeah. was actually the number one seed in the tournament. Two years ago, Michigan State was the number one seed. They got knocked out in the first round. Four Michigan State players with double figures leading them to a 16-point advantage. Look at the second half field goal percentages. Illinois under 30% in the half. Well, they just, you know, with Bradford out of there, and uh, although he's been back out on the floor, it's not the same intensity that Illinois had when they had a chance to make a game of this. It's been all Michigan State NCAA basketball selection show coming up at 6.30 Eastern time. First thing you'll want to see, who will be the one seeds? Will Cincinnati hold up as a one? Will they give two out of the Pac-10, Arizona and Stanford? I could see that happening, too. Jim, how about the, the postseason conference tournament? Some that went kind of true to form. You get the Connecticut-St. John's matchup, which is, you know, reasonable. You have the matchup here between two top teams in the Big Ten. The ACC, Maryland and Duke, the two top teams there. Then you had some conferences that just went crazy in the postseason. Like the SEC. Well, the, the, big, the big 12 was one that went kind of true to form. Two of their better teams getting to the top of the SEC and Conference USA were just crazy. Three-pointer by Harrington. We had four cases this year where a nine seed in a conference tournament beat a one. That included the action here where Penn State beat the one Ohio State. St. Louis over Cincinnati, Miami of Ohio over Bowling Green, and Syracuse over, or Georgetown over, over Syracuse. Syracuse yeah. Let's take a look at the CBS Sports Line stat of the game and its overall field goal percentages. Michigan State up over 50%. Illinois at 32%. For complete game stats, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Of course, this is a Michigan State team that helped Wisconsin yesterday to a season low 30%. You mentioned that earlier. Right. And now they got uh, Illinois at 32% today. Jim, another thing that's kind of strange, you know, you always talk about and during your NFL today uh, period, you talk about can a team beat somebody three times in a given year. You're normally thinking about the, the dominant team beating the other guy, and you figure the underdog in that third game maybe can pull it out. How about the Tulsa-Fresno State situation? Tulsa was the dominant team, but you know what? Fresno State, the underdog, beat them all three times. How often have you seen that? That's, that's a rarity. Really strange. And Fresno State, you had them on the bubble, but uh, what do you think? In, out? I don't know. It's pretty tough to, to not give them a shot at it when uh, they beat a team like Tulsa that's had such an outstanding year three times and won their conference tournament. The trouble is the conference tournament doesn't have the automatic pick. I still think they'll respect that, the fact that they won that conference tournament, and given the performance over Tulsa this year, Jerry Tarkanian back in the tournament. That'll be some sight. Courtney Alexander, the young man that transferred from Virginia out there, uh, having a sensational season. Timeout called by Illinois. They created their microprocessor in 1971, and the faster their chips have performed, the faster their company has grown. Today, the Intel design is the brain behind the majority of the world's PC. By the 21st century, their chip could execute two billion instructions in one second. Where do you learn about such fast-thinking companies? Exactly. NASDAQ, stock market for the digital world. We're back in Chicago. You know what we need, uh, Jim, in the NCAA tournament? Dick Clark. You know, to do the countdown. Oh, what do you yeah. mean? Drop the ball. Yeah, the ball comes team. down. Dick Clark does it. Maybe you could, you know, take his spot there. What do you think? It's on another network, by the way. Oh, it is? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize what I was watching, but... Uh, he is on our air, I believe, with the, you know, new show. winning lines. You know that. 65-50, Michigan State. It does kind of have a similar tone to it, though, doesn't it? Michigan State staying in that zone the rest of the way. Macon, Illinois, trying to do it from outside. Great to see Bradford hit one. Brings it within 12 with 6-10 remaining in the game. That shows you what kind of guts he has. The nose is too swollen to x-ray, and he's out here hitting three-point shots. Double team on Cleves. 
Lon Kruger realizing he's got to make something happen on the defense. Hudson wide open inside. Nobody will give him the ball. Little one four set. Does he hit another three? Ooh, almost. Oh, he wanted to hit that one with McLean right there in his face to give him a little talk. Illinois on a 10-2 run. Three and look out. Short for Johnson. Hard to come back, though, Jim, when you're going to take shots like that. Oh, smart play by Bell. Well, right over Harrington. Oh, what a nice play. And, and a charge. Call with a charge. And, and you know who drew the charge? Bradford. With that nose to step in there and draw the charge. Now watch what Bell does. He flips the ball right over Harrington. Harrington said, where are you going with it? Then goes and picks it up, has the right to dribble it. It's a legal play. He can go dribble, and then all of a sudden, Bradford's waiting on him. He picks up the charge. Talk about guts. Here's a guy oh. possibly with a broken nose standing in there and taking the draw charge. Third on Bell. Still 12 points here. Time winding down. And here he is, Bradford. Short. They've had two chances at threes to get it under uh, 10. Both misfires. Tonight on 60 Minutes, Timothy McVeigh, the man convicted of the Oklahoma City bombing that killed 168 people, and also Trevor Reese Jones, the bodyguard who survived the crash and killed Princess Diana. We'll talk for the first time to Ed Bradley and Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes tonight. Cook comes back. Chukadebe to the bench. But Jim, I look back at this game, and I'm sure Lon Kruger, when he... Uh, goes and watches tapes of it one of the things that illinois did not do in this game if you're going to beat a michigan state they did not go to where they would have the advantage and that in my estimation was going down to the low post early in the game establishing a low post game and then starting to work on the outside shots you remember the first part of this game guys were coming down taking quick shots relying on the perimeter game and uh, michigan state just too tough for them out there Apologize for that momentary lapse in coverage. With our signal, but we're all back here in Chicago. Brian Cook had 18 in each of the last two games for Illinois. Billy only five points so far today. Well, he hasn't had many touches, Jim. Wow. He hasn't had 18 touches today, much less 18 points. Taking four shots, and while we continue to power back up here in Chicago, we'll we'll keep you apprised of the score. Down to ten seconds again. They go one four. I thought what McLean really did a great job there. What Cleese has been doing is trying to freeze him. McLean looks over at him and takes the jump shot. That time McLean anticipated the drive and moved his feet beautifully. You know what it's like banging bodies with Cleve. Just ask Eduardo Nahara. Oh, boy. Last year's tournament. We don't need any more of those. No, oh, boy. That, that, that was some sight right in front of us. Nahara having his career high yesterday. Oklahoma will be a tough out in this tournament. Matter of fact, I think all of the Big 12 will be some tough outs. All right. We're back all the way. Johnson comes up short on the bank shot. Four minutes to go. Illinois had some chances now with the number at 12, but unable to inch closer. Well, pretty soon the clock becomes their opponent as well. McLean is giving Cleese trouble and loving it. Bell, traffic. McLean comes in there, and not only was Garden Cleese came over to help out, he is some competitor. Let's see if this trip, the line I can walk, cut it under 10. No, spins in and out for Bradford. And a foul on Illinois. McLean sticking his nose in there again, trying to come up with the steal. You know, it really kind of surprised me, Jim. Michigan State had a rested starting lineup that they brought back into the game at the seven-minute mark, and they really have not functioned very well. Timeout on the floor. State by 12. The U.S. Olympic team. 65-53. We've been stuck on that score for a couple of minutes here. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Selection Sunday on CBS. Got to figure six teams coming out of the Big Ten. 
I would think so, Jim, but right now, well, you have a lot of coaching taking place in this game, as crazy as that may sound. Because if you're Tom Izzo, you've got to get your guys to refocus back in here. And, and you're Lon Kruger on the other side. And unless something happens dramatically, your club's not going to win this game. But you've got to start now coaching towards the next basketball game. Johnson almost picked that one off. And the weak pass. Came back for his senior year to claim the unfinished business of a year ago. Final four, but no national championship. Ranger, three-pointer, bouncing around, picked up by Bell. Will reset. But Bell's an outstanding rebounder guard. And Ranger's the kind of guy you get caught in mismatches because he'll step out and then the guard fills in behind him. Bell gives him about five rebounds a game. Yep. Bubble trouble. These are some of the teams right now that are feeling, feeling quite uneasy as we approach the announcement. Hey, I was wrong in that Notre Dame one, too. They, that, the loss was Providence and Pitt, not BC. But in either case, uh, those are the kind of losses that are uh, hard to come by. You beat Connecticut twice, lose to uh, Providence and Pitt. And if they had those two in the bag, they wouldn't be on any bubble at all. Plus, they had that early, anyway. early season win at Ohio State. Right. Can't take this much time. Uh, Isn't it amazing how Johnson has become the man? Remember Archibald last year who played so well in the tournament, getting very little playing time. Williams spins out, Cook, yes. Oh, that's got to be the key, Bill Roy. Get Cook and get the ball in his hands. Scoring at last, and within 10, the Illini with 220. The clock becomes their biggest opponent, though. You've got two guards like Cleves and Bell out there. A lot of experience on the floor with Peterson and Hudson and Granger. Be hard in two minutes' time to make it up. That Cook basket, the first points in the game on either side. Four minutes on the game clock. Illinois had a lot of chances to work it under 10. Bell answers on the other end. That's his favorite shot. Two dribbles, the little gliding jumper down on the baseline. Ends a stretch of seven consecutive misses by Michigan State. And here's why it is so valuable now if you remember that Tom Izzo had these four starters on that bench for a nice spell. They're totally rested here and ready for the stretch. Tonight on CBS, 60 minutes. Followed by Touch by an Angel. And then the world television premiere of Going Home. Academy Award winner Jason Robard stars. Big night tonight on CBS. Getting with 60 minutes right after the NCAA selection show. Lucas Johnson only a sophomore. You mentioned Robert Archibald earlier. Hasn't entered the game here today. He did get a number of starts this year. And Coach Kruger was saying he's had a, a year where his playing time has been curtailed a, a great deal by sickness. The flu, one time, flu poisoning. But it just throws you behind in the practices. And when you get behind and as deep as this team is, you just don't get an opportunity for playing minutes. Gets the second. Minute 43 to go. Good job by Hudson to come back and meet the ball. Thieves keeps the dribble alive and has to call the timeout. Watch out here. Johnson shoves Cleves. The arms were tangled and oh, Cleves no. accidentally uh -oh. had an elbow. Uh-oh. I think face. he's throwing him out of the game. I think he's throwing him out of the game. Now, they won't declare this a fight. Just think of that, Jim. They had to you declare it a fight. You missed your days. Absolutely. They're taking Cleves is going to be thrown out of the game as Johnson. I don't like that move at all by the officials because one official had this completely under control. Watch down. Yeah, you'll see it right here. here. Right. And, and then, and then and Cleves says, just, hey, come on, get away from me a second. Johnson comes back at him a little bit, but the official is under control. He has him calm down. The official comes from across the court to make this call. You see right here, steps right in, gets it all under control. There's nothing more going on. And now Cleve's going to find out from the official across the floor that he's throwing them both out. But they got it, it is not a fight. It can't be thought of being a fight. Could be a double technical. 
They summit the three officials, Hillary, yeah. Rucker, and Hightower. And Tom Izzo saying, why did we have to do that? And Tom goes right into that huddle, challenging everybody. Did you see any grounds there for dismissal? No, no I, re I really did not. I, I think that the official that was right on top of the play had no intention of doing that. Double T. And it's nothing's going to happen. There'll be no free throws. The dead ball, double T. Yep, and Michigan confirmed. State will get that ball right back. So no one's thrown out. Double technical. Yeah, Tom is uh, a guy that definitely gets your attention when he goes into that uh, huddle. The selection show, less than an hour to go here on CBS. And what do you think will be the, the big issue this year when well, the, all the brackets are set? I think, first thing we've got to say, Jim, and I think we, you and I, since we've been doing this for a number of years, the most difficult by far uh, selection process that there's ever been. And, uh, and I'm, the only thing I'm looking for is consistency. And the consistency being that if a Cincinnati is not a number one seed, then that means that you took in consideration not having a player. If an Arizona turns out to be a number one seed, where did anybody have information that Lauren Woods is going to play? Uh, I think that's what you always look for. So nobody gets thrown out of the ball game. They just call it a double technical, which I think was a very wise thing to do. No shots are taken. Nobody thrown out. No fight. And, uh, and, and a good piece of officiating as they got together there. And Johnson fouls Peterson putting him on the line. You know, one thing is Michigan State is, in fact, as many expect, the one seed in the Midwest. That is a Thursday-Saturday combination, which means after playing three straight, you're back playing here in four days uh, you know, for, the, for the big tournament. That's enough time to, oh, be. to rest up. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, there's no formula that guarantees you a championship or even a Final Four appearance. So it just get yourself ready to play. Matter of fact, we've seen teams, Jim, that were playing horribly the last part of the season. And I always go back to Villanova. They won a national championship. People said you can't win a national championship unless you play hard-nosed man-to-man. They played zone all the time. They won one. And they were playing horribly the last week of the season. Got knocked out of the Big East tournament right away. Didn't even think they were going to get in the NCAA. And six games later, they're the champs. Minute 25 remaining in this one. For Michigan State is crowned the Big Ten tournament champions for a turn over here. Tom Izzo getting a little lesson here. Does his ball club have the ability to work against the press? Now, what I think they ought to do is throw over the top of everything. Illinois trying to play just on this half court. If somebody breaks long, they'll get an easy basket. Williams gets it to 10. See, and they get a timeout. Now, Jim, watch where they deploy the defense when we come back out here. Almost everybody will be inside 20 feet. Michigan State can break a man wall. away from the selection uh, show Sunday. Everybody get their brackets ready. There always are some surprises. Are you ready? Yeah, I'll be ready. Ten-point lead here. Now let's see what Tom Izzo has in mind for his club. Breaks guys here, see if he sends somebody long. Timeout call by Hudson. Ran the baseline, still couldn't find it open. They, they have got to throw over the top and go down the other end. We'll take a timeout with a 10 point advantage for State. If you've been thinking about jumping into a rugged new Montana, I need more room! Now's a really good time. Never seen a minivan do that before. Maybe it's not really a minivan. Life was more exciting in Montana. Now jump into a rugged Montana with this limited time offer, but get a move on because the train's leaving the station. We're back 
in Chicago, and uh, Billy, one no. last chance for you to tell us the four number one. No, 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 come on. No, no. You can no. do it. I, I, can, can. I, can't, I can't do that. I can't get up with Jim. You're the, you're the bracket mice. I'm wavering on Cincinnati. Yeah, you've been doing that all, all day long. I think it's going to be the two from the Pac-10. Stanford, Arizona, Michigan State, and Duke. I have never seen you in a situation beyond January the 15th where you weren't sure as to who would be the number I one seed. sleep. Again, nobody goes long. Illinois has five guys down here doing a great job. Look at that. Lon Kruger never given up. Izzo cannot believe it. They had three attempts to get the ball over half court and couldn't do it. They have got to throw the ball long. Bradford just to get it to seven. Ranger boxed out for the rebound. Now, it is so tough. When the other team doesn't care whether they foul, they don't care whether they give up the easy basket, they know you're trying to run out the clock, so they're coming after you. The executive producer of CBS Sports is Terry Ewart, coordinating producer of NCAA basketball. It's Bob Dekas. Today's game directed by Bob Fishman. Pins oil at the half, produced by Eric Mann and directed by Kathy Barreto. The associate directors of today's game, Ken Mack. Bob Vassilopoulos, Broadcast Associates, Fred Johnson, Jonathan Siegel. And the technical manager of today's game, Rick Godwin. Technical director, Scott Sickler, Pat McGrath on stats. Jim, let me, Art McGrath. Jim, let me ask you a question. What if Ohio State were in the position right now that Michigan State's in, having a chance to win the Big Ten Championship? Would they have been a number one? Uh, you know, they could have been, could have been two ones out of here, and they made it to this point. So you think that they go from uh, one losing to a, two. a game? Absolutely, losing in the first round. I think they'll be the two in the West. That's my guess. So what you're saying is if Ohio State had come through these three days with the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Oh, if they won the championship, yeah. they definitely would have been a one. They would have been the one. I huh? think they may have. Michigan been. State would have gone to a, a two. I think they both could have possibly been one. Wow. I think it was very possible. You're talking about teams, Billy, that were ranked four or five in the country coming into the week. I think that I caught you in a trap where you have about six different number ones. You have, <laughs> no. You're giving me the Stanford-Arizona scenario, the Temple scenario, the Duke scenario, the Michigan State-Ohio State scenario, the Cincinnati scenario. I'm at, I'm at an eight. Now, wait a minute. You asked me had Ohio State hypothesizing here made it to Sunday. They didn't. Had they? Yeah, it could have been different. Williams scores on the drive. There they go long, and they'll have something. They have a layup. Leaves to Granger and one. First time that they took advantage. Now, you can't guard the whole court. And what Illinois was doing is guarding about a third of the court, leaving two thirds wide open. Michigan State finally saw it and went long and got an easy layup. You see where you have one defender against uh, two offensive players on the other end of the floor. You had four defenders. Well, two years in a row, Michigan State wins the Big Ten Tournament Championship, Jim. Are you saying it's over already? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, folks. Here comes the big Illinois rally. <laughs> Those people. The only team I want to make sure I don't broadcast this year is UCLA <laughs> in this tournament. You're afraid to face it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, tough, huh? yeah it's really got me losing sleep. Final 25 seconds. Harrington, jumper, back to the rim. Granger got a little piece. Mast gives it up. Johnson, he'll take it from the corner. And Cleves does the right thing, as does Illinois. They drop back and realize this game is over. He's a senior. Let the ball end up in his hands here. Mateen Cleves. There's only one thing in front of him now. It's a run through the NCAA tournament. That's what he came back for. But his Spartans have once again claimed the Big Ten Tournament Championship. The 
Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Leotis Brown from Illinois and Andre Hudson of Michigan State. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. The Payne Weber CBS Sports Desk is next with Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg. Jim Nance and Billy Packer saying so long for now from Chicago, where Michigan State has won the Big Ten Championship. Selection Sunday continues on CBS in a moment. Welcome to the Payne Weber CBS Sports Desk coming to you on this Selection Sunday from the new NCAA Hall of Champions here in Indianapolis, Indiana. This reminder, coming up at 6.30 Eastern Time here on CBS, the live exclusive announcement of the tournament seeds and pairings on the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. We have just seen the Michigan State Spartans claim the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Let's take you back out to the United Center and rejoin Jim Nance and Billy Packer. All right, thank you very much, Greg. Here with the Big Ten champions, Morris Peterson, the team cleaves, Coach Tom Izzo. Congratulations, the champions again. How does that sound? Well, it sounds great, and these guys did all the work. They, uh, they've had a heck of a career. I hope they got a little left in them right now. Well, there, there is uh, a little more action ahead, but Mateen, how sweet is it for you to come back this year and win a Big Ten title? Oh, it feels great. You know, um, a lot of people really didn't understand why I came back. Now they can see why. You know, I'm on schedule to get my degree, and I won a couple more championships, so I really feel good right now. Morris, I want to go back to one play in this game, and there was a play in which Mateen threw the lob to you that you put it away. How often have you guys been playing together so there was just almost a feel? That was in diagram. How do you get that feel for a play like that? Well, Mateen and I have been playing together for like 10 years, and um, it's, it's kind of being second nature to us. You know, he, you know, he's always there to throw good passes. You know, he, he does a good job running the team, and that's just, it's just second nature to us. How often have you seen him get thrown out of a game for fighting because of misconduct? I mean, does that happen on the playground? Really? No, it's a little rougher when we're back in front. <laughs> hey, guys, was there any talk at all before the game that you had to win this one to lock up a number one seed? Did you believe in that? Um, well, really, we wanted to. You know, we, I mean, we didn't really talk about it. We just wanted to go out and take care of our business and let the voters, you know, however they, you know, vote or whatever, let, them, let that take care of itself. But we didn't talk about it too much. We wanted to come out and win a Big Ten tournament championship. Coach, I see you're shaking your head. No. Well, you know, uh, no, I'm saying I agree with them. I mean, we really didn't make a big deal about the number one seed. There's a lot of teams deserving of it. I think we're one that should be considered. But with seven losses, I can understand it either way. And we got to beat a lot of good teams to advance anyway. So what's the difference? Hey, the coach says he's going to leave it up to you guys whether or not you want to tear down the nets here. What's the, what's the decision? Go tear, tear them down. <laughs> this is Chicago, huh? <laughs> hey, congratulations, guys. Nice All the you best in the NCAA out. tournament coming up. Let's go back nice to going. Greg and Clark in Indianapolis. All right, Jim, thank you. So the Michigan State Spartans, 76-61, they win by 15.